robotics is kind of taken off with the workforce and others today because they have been introduced to something that's not the same but so similar. But it's this idea that digital labor, digital people, if you will, can do work with us out in the human area. In the federal space, and people I run across, they've actually started looking at the value that these robotic uh, process robotics can do for them. And it's a perfect opportunity for them to leverage uh, the, the use of RPA. Vendors that are producing the product are, are really trying to get out in the market and gain market share. So uh, just like UiPath, they were willing to provide the software for evaluation. You're getting the opportunity now to put a uh, process robotics agent on a desktop and run it and play with it and see what it does and is it easy, was it hard to load. You've not been able to do that in the past. And then go back to vendors and say, here's a tweak we could ask you to make and if you can make that, it really would make a difference. I recently started telling people when you're trying to decide how you want to staff up to do robotics that you're going to be on the exact same road as everyone else. You know, you're going to need to do a proof of concept, you're going to want to do a pilot, you're going to go into production, and then you're going to stand up a center of excellence. The difference is the driver and the car on the road. You can choose to say this is simple, but you run a risk if you do that, and I think there are two major risks. One risk is you will develop slower because you're not familiar with those lessons learned that others who have been working with that software have had before. And the other is, is you're gonna increase your backlog. Because if you take three developers out of your CIO shop and then put them on additional process robotics, you're gonna get more process robotics, but you're gonna have less uh, changes to your core foundational software. Whereas if you go with some integrators, you've seen some common things that are necessary in all three, and so those development teams come in and lay that foundation down first. So you get a more secure bot, a more stable bot, a bot that uh, adheres to policies that you hadn't even thought to put in your contract language, but because they were modular, they were just inserted as a package. So if you think of a Lego puzzle you're trying to put together, and you assign the dollar value to each one of those Legos, in the old processes that we did to develop software, you got that $100 return on investment when all those Lego pieces were put into place. Of course, it didn't quite do what you needed it to do because in that development, there were changes that were made and changes that were skipped. Now break those Legos up now and say, there's a third Lego up there that's got $2 signs on it. It looks like it could be developed in a month. If we did that, we would immediately receive those $2 signs worth of return on investment. And if there's a major change in the process someplace, the change is not as impactful as it was on that previous one where you waited to the end to get your return on investment only to have to say it's not quite what we were looking for. You guys offer training, the boot camp type of things others do. Send whoever wants to go to them. Have them download. You take advantage of the website where you have all of the different classes. If they pick it up and they can develop a bot, I have applications on my phone that I have no idea who developed. I just know that I want that piece of functionality on my phone. So I don't think you have to settle on one type of developer. What you want to know is who are the good developers.